Welcome back. So now we are going to look at our first concept for this lesson, which is the need for energy. And here we are going to look at the definition of the term photosynthesis. All living organisms need energy to sustain life. Energy drives interactions between plants and animals in an ecosystem. So the sun is the main source of energy for all living organisms on earth. So in order for you to have energy, you need the sun. The sun provides energy in a form of light. So green plants, which are known as producers, depend on the light energy from the sun to make their own food. This is done through the process of photosynthesis. So as you can see, we have a light bulb, which has a green plant over here, which is an indication that we need the light that is surrounding this green plant in order for this plant to grow. Now let us look at the term photosynthesis. This word comes from the Greek language. So the word photo means light and synthesis means to put together. So in short, the term photosynthesis is when plants use light to put together certain things so that it can make food that is photosynthesis. So now we are going to dive into more details as to what is it that is being put together in order for the plant to make its own food. And that is going to be our second concept for the lesson, which is the requirements for photosynthesis. In order for photosynthesis to take place, we need three things. The first one is radiant energy. We said that radiant energy is light energy which is produced from the sun. As you can see, this is our light energy coming from the sun. Our second thing or concept that is needed is carbon dioxide. I'm quickly going to raise that. So carbon dioxide is found from the atmosphere and it's emitted by multiple things. We find carbon dioxide emitted by living organisms such as animals, we find it being emitted by factories, so carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. And the last one is water. So water comes from the roots, obviously, because it's being absorbed by the plant. Therefore, photosynthesis is a process where green plants, which is our producers, absorb radiant energy from the sun. They also absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the soil to produce, form, uh, to produce food rather in a form of glucose. So now we are going to move on to the next part of the lesson, which is the chloroplast and chlorophyll. So this is going to give us more detail as to how these things are used in making the food during photosynthesis. So in the cells of green plants, we find small structures which are called chloroplasts. They are found in, green, in the green parts of the plant. The chloroplast contains a green pigment which is called the chlorophyll. The chlorophyll is responsible for giving plants their green color such a, oh, giving plants their green color, yes, and animals such as the cyanobacteria. So as you can see on the picture alongside, this is how a chloroplast looks like. And these structures inside here is what we call the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll is what is responsible for absorbing this energy from the sun. It's also responsible for absorbing the carbon dioxide that comes from the atmosphere. So the chlorophyll is responsible for absorbing, like we have just mentioned now, the radiant energy, the carbon dioxide, and also it converts the water into glucose and oxygen, which are the products of photosynthesis. So we are going to look at what happens to the glucose. The glucose is used as fuel by plants to do their work. So when we are speaking about work, we are speaking about the life processes that the plant has to undergo, such as respiration, growth, reproduction, and more. When animals eat the plants, they then consume 
the starch. Remember we said that the glucose is then stored as starch in plants. So when animals eat the plant, they consume the starch that the plant has made during photosynthesis, which then gives them the energy that they need to perform tasks. Right, then we are going to move on to the products of photosynthesis. So after all that has happened, what are we getting as the outcome or the product of the process? The first product that we come across is glucose. So the glucose is a type of sugar that is stored in plants as starch. The plant can then use the glucose directly. When we say directly, we mean the plant will then use the glucose for its own life processes. And it releases the energy during its own respiration. What it also does with the glucose is to convert it to starch. Now, when it converts it into starch, obviously the starch is going to be stored and reserved in the plant. The second product is oxygen. The oxygen is also released back into the atmosphere through the leaves of the plant. So the, the pores in the leaves of the plant will release the oxygen into the atmosphere. The oxygen is then used by other living organisms such as humans and animals during their own respiration, which is in, in simple terms their breathing. Now let us look at the picture that gives us a better explanation of what photosynthesis is. As you can see on this picture, we have our sun. And during the lesson, we said the sun gives us radiant energy. Radiant energy. So this radiant energy is absorbed by the green parts of the plant. And we said the green parts of the plant has chloroplast. These chloroplasts contain a chlorophyll and the chlorophyll we said it has it is a green pigment that is responsible for absorbing the radiant energy from the sun. So now the chlorophyll again is responsible for absorbing the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So now we said the chlorophyll absorbs the radiant energy, the carbon dioxide. And then we also said during photosynthesis, water is absorbed through the roots of the plant and is transported up to the green parts of the plant. So these are the three requirements for the processes for the process of photosynthesis to take place. So now these three requirements are put together by the chlorophyll inside of the chloroplast. Then we get two products from this process. These products are oxygen, which is released back into the atmosphere to assist other living organisms during their breathing process. And the second product is the sugar, which is also known as glucose. So this glucose is used by the plant during its own life processes and also it is stored in the plant as starch and the starch will then be later used by other organisms that are going to eat the plant for them to obtain energy. So in essence that is the process of photosynthesis. So we are going to leave it here for now and I'll see you after the break.